Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out and joining us today. Uh, we're really excited about our new version of Security Pro that we'll be launching. A couple things to mention before we get into this. If you haven't been on a webinar before with us, if you're on a computer, there is a taskbar for GoToWebinar that has a questions panel. And so any questions you have throughout, please feel free to enter that in the questions panel. We'll address them if it's if it's something that can benefit everyone, we'll address that towards the end for everyone. If it's something individual, we'll address that individually or, or we'll catch up with you by email after the webinar. Um, one thing to note, it is Cybersecurity Month and there are a lot of exciting things that our marketing team has been doing. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that at the very end. And we have a question and an answer that'll qualify you to to go to our Cybersecurity Month website and win a prize. Um, we, we're giving out a lot of different prizes and cash grants for your school programs. We also have a few giveaways that we're going to give randomly to those um, who are attending today. So be be sure to stick around till the end and we'll go over that. Uh, one other thing to mention, we did see a lot of students that were registering through our website for this webinar. You're more than welcome to stay and learn about the changes we have with Security Pro. However, the, the focus of this is probably a little bit more towards instructors, those who have been teaching test out or are interested in teaching test out and seeing what topics and technologies we're showing in this course. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and get started. And we're gonna, we're gonna cover uh, a quick overview of the market with cybersecurity. It's probably no surprise any of the figures that I'll share. We'll talk a, a briefly about CompTIA changes to the Security Plus certification. Uh, we'll look at some of the test out changes and some new features and content. And I have Dana Fellows on the line with me. He's our a lead curriculum developer and designer here at Test Out. One of the instrumental figures in making this course a reality and, and definitely knows his stuff when it comes to cybersecurity and, and cybersecurity training. So. We'll, we'll be happy to hear from him and he'll show us some of the new features and new labs that we have coming out in Security Pro version seven. So looking at the market, um, this is this shouldn't be any surprise to anyone who's who's been looking at cybersecurity. The, the cybersecurity job postings, I've, I've got links in the notes here when we send out these slides so you can see where these numbers are coming from. But job postings have grown 94% in the past six years, and that's compared to 30% growth in all IT jobs. And cybersecurity positions now account for about 13% of all information technology jobs. It's expected that there will be a 350% growth in open cybersecurity positions, and that will, by the end of 2021, it's estimated to be three and a half million unfilled jobs globally. And so there, there's not, the, the market's just growing faster than pretty much any other industry out there. Um, fewer than one in four applicants are considered qualified for the positions they're applying for. So there is a very large skills gap of those who are trying to, to go into cybersecurity. And then some of the top in-demand jobs uh, for 2020, cybersecurity manager, admin, cybersecurity consultants, network engineers, um, what we would consider more of an entry level, a cybersecurity analyst and cybersecurity engineer. And so these are all high pay, high skill positions, but they're not out of reach for students who are looking at, at entering cybersecurity. Cybersecurity analyst is a common one. And three years ago, it was estimated that there were 26,000 open positions for cybersecurity analysts. Uh, moving on to a little bit of background uh, with Security Plus and, and test out Security Pro. Uh, in 2017, in October, is when the version six of test out Security Pro and the SYO 501 CompTIA Security Plus exams came out. Um, so we're looking at November 17th for an official launch and uh, of test out Security Pro. And if you're an instructor, I'll show you how you can look at pre-release access in just a minute. And then, um, CompTIA Security Plus, they haven't given an exact date for when this exam will come out, but they still say that November 2020, so expected next month. For those of you who are already test out Security Pro instructors, pre-release was sent out yesterday. It's, it's a little bit different than it was when we were in our last version of LabSim with test out. For those who are 
into the know, it's uh, we're on LabSim 6 now. It was a major revision to our platform that hosts all of our courses. And with that, there's a really nice feature for pre-release access. You don't have to worry about changing out products or at co contacting your campus admin to make it so that you can see this pre-release access. You just go into your account, into your My Products tab, and where Test Out Security Pro is, you will see the new version pre-released. And you just click here. It takes you right into the course. There's, It's not just a preview, you'll see all of the resources there and you can plan any changes for your course going forward. Version six is not going to retire the same day that we launch version seven. There will be an overlap and we'll work with customers and with our internal teams to, to announce a retirement date for that going forward. But at this time, we don't have a retirement date. So if you're if you're still teaching courses on version six through the through winter 2021 don't worry about it it'll still be there for you to use and then if you do not have instructor access to our courses we'll send out these slides but here's a link to it you can also just go to testout.com search our courses and you can request probably five different places you can request instructor access now looking at comptia changes comptia they did a great webinar. They've detailed on a blog post the changes that are coming to Security Plus. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that. The resources are already there. If you've been looking at the changes coming, you've probably already been there and you may have even watched the webinar. So I'll send this link out to you. If you want to see the changes that CompTIA, CompTIA is looking at, go ahead and head there. Um, they are going from six exam domains down to five. A lot of those have been consolidated or rearranged, and they estimate about 25% of content will be different from their 501 to 601 exams. Looking at Security Pro, I don't want to get hung up on the specific changes. Um, I will. I also see a couple questions in here that people can't hear us speaking. I think that might just be their uh their audio on theirs so if if yeah we should be looking good there um security pro version six to version seven we've done quite a bit of restructuring and expanding the outline uh we've moved from nine objectives to 14 and some of these have just been rearranged some things have been omitted and there is new content as well looking at the changes we have estimate approximately 15% more content that addresses the continuing expansion of cybersecurity skills and technologies. Um, I've detailed here the version six. You can see that videos have expanded, demonstration videos have expanded, additional simulations have been created, additional fact sheets, and then we have the number of exams is different, but it's not that it's been reduced, it's that it's been realigned. And so, this is available to see. This is still a draft because we are, as we said, it's pre-release. We're still uploading some videos, changing some items, but it's pretty much set where the outline is going to be. We don't anticipate any outline changes, so you can plan on those uh, changes to be to be there for the final version of version seven. Um, we also, with this webinar, will be sending you out a change document. You may have seen these before if you've worked through some test out changes. I find it very helpful for me, as someone who's not actually teaching cybersecurity, to see what's moving, what's been renamed, what's new. And so we'll send that out to you along with these slides so you can see every resource that is changing, especially if you have a course outline or you work with an LMS and are wondering how it's going to impact the changes to your course. The next uh, few slides, I'm just gonna go over really quickly. I don't wanna spend a lot of time just reading text. I put them in here because I wanna send it out to you so you can see an overview of the topics in the course. And you can see areas where we've added additional content. Again, this is just taking from that change document we'll send out. But we have a lot of topics that are going to continue. Any topic that I put in bold is a topic that will have additional sections added, whether it's an additional video, an additional text lesson or an additional lab. And so I've put in several of these, not meant to go over everything, but we'll just look at a lot of the topics are staying. You're not gonna see a gigantic change in, in how the, the course is created, 
but like I said, about additional 15% content. And then if we're looking at the CompTIA change, they anticipate 25% different content. Um, there is some, There are some topics that have been removed or the topic has been removed and we've consolidated content in different areas. So this will be another thing that you can look at seeing where things have changed. It doesn't mean they're gone. Like if we look at symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption, they used to have a dedicated section. It's now been incorporated into another section. And so, like I said, some of these have been consolidated and, uh, and updated for version seven. Now, moving into new topics, these are some of the things that are, are really exciting and where we've been able to show new technology and new labs and new content. Um, a lot on vulnerability, expansion of Windows user management, a whole new section on cloud security because cloud is just growing like crazy. Um, new security assessment tools and labs, analyzing network attacks, and going along with that incident response, forensics, and recovery. So looking at what happens when there are attacks and how to respond to those. Mitigation of incidents, uh, Windows logging, more on digital forensics, file and packet manipulation, risk management, um, governance and compliance, controls and frameworks, sensitive data and privacy, and we are uh, revising and updating our practice exams to prepare students for both the Test Out Security Pro certification as well as the CompTIA Security Plus SYO601 certification. Um, and with, with these new topics and this new revision, I'm really excited to say I think we're one of the first, if not the first, courseware publisher that will have the update ready for those of you who align to CompTIA. So we'll Depending on when they do launch the certification, we might even have the course ready before the new certification comes out. Along with these new topics, we have a lot of new hands-on and demonstrated technology. Um, a lot of this has to do with some of the synergies we, we look at when we're looking at an ethical hacker course and with a security pro course. So we, we show and, dem and give students experience in Kali Linux. We've used a lot of PFSense in this. It's an open source networking tool and, and networking appliances. There's SMAC, SMAC, Open Directory, OpenStego, PowerShell, Wireshark, Nmap, Edercap, and John the Ripper. These are some of the ones that you, the students will gain hands-on technology, hands-on um, experience with the technology. We also show a lot of demonstrated technology in our demonstration videos. I won't go through every single thing on this list, but Again, we'll have it out there and you can go into our course if you have pre-release and take a look at, at how these factor into the course and how students can gain experience with these tools. Um, now with that, again, I said I didn't want to spend a ton of time just going over topics and going over changes. That's something we'll send out to you with the slides and with the change document. But I wanted to have Dana on here since he's got a lot of experience designing and building and, and teaching as well. And so I'm going to pass it over to Dana to show you a couple of the labs that we that we built that are new to the Security Pro course. So we'll start with 11.6.4. I'm not sure which order you had those in. So this one here is um, Poison ARP and Analyze with Wireshark. So um, Wireshark is one of the new tools that we're using in this course. So if I assume everybody on here is familiar with how um, test out looks and feels, but if you haven't taught um, maybe our cyber defense course or cyber or ethical hacker course, I'm sorry, um, this is Kali Linux and Kali Linux is used by um, penetration testers and ethical hackers to test systems and Wireshark is built into um, Kali Linux. So this um, sim right here, uh, it says you're an IT administrator, small corporate network. Um, you believe a hacker has, is on your system and use art poisoning to um, perhaps a man in the middle or something. So uh, the first step, it says use Wireshark to capture packets on this interface right here. So uh, this is what Kali Linux looks like. Um, expand this out a little bit. So it says to uh, use this interface right here to capture packets. So if you're familiar with Wireshark, you know you gotta select the interface and then they car call this up here, the shark fin to start capturing packets. And it says to capture packets for about five seconds. So I'll let this run just for a few seconds here. 
And then if I click the little red um, square here, it stops capturing. So the next thing it says is to uh, determine what's going on and use the IP address 192.168.0.2 um, to help identify. So it also says um, we just want to look at ARP. So you can use the filter up here and that helps um, narrow things down. If you look at the protocols, the only thing I have now is ARP. So the thing is we want to see what's kind of going on with this 192 address. And if I scroll up here a little bit, um, right here, the very first packet, it says it's a broadcast packet. And basically what's happening is, is the IP address um, 0.46 sending out a broadcast and basically saying like, hey, who has the IP address of 192.168.0.2? And then if you know, tell me, you know, 0 0.46. So that's a broadcast. And if you look at the MAC address down here, it's just all zero. So it doesn't know the MAC address. So it's asking for the MAC address. So right down here on the third packet um, or frame, it's we get a response. It says, um, 192.168.0.2 is at this MAC address. All right, so that's good and fine and dandy. But then if you look down a couple more um, frames, you, we have another response. It's saying 192 is at 0.2, uh, I'm sorry. Um, but also it's a, it's a duplicate has been detected. So we have two responses for the same uh, broadcast message. So let's look at the questions here. We should look at this first so we know what we're looking for. Um, it says, what is the MAC address of the first responding device? Well, the first responding um, device was this one right here. And you see the MAC address is right here. And I'll type that in real quick. Should have picked the one that didn't have as much typing. And the next part says, what is the MAC address of the duplicate responding device? So that's this one right down here. So once again, we'll type in that MAC address. And I hope I got those typed in right. And we can hit the score lab and it looks like I accomplished that um, correctly. So um, obviously before you do that, Sim, you have um, lessons, a video lesson and a demo and some text lessons that explain exactly what we're doing here. Um, the next one is 519. And this is one of the new PFSense uh, demos or simulations. We have demos and simulations. I think there's probably at least a dozen to 15 demos on PFSense and there's probably eight to 10 sims. I haven't counted them lately. So uh, PFSense is an open source um, firewall um, intrusion detection. It does all types of things and one of the reasons why we need decided to use um, PFSense or, or demos and sims is because there's so much, so many free components that you can, uh, modules and plugins that you can add to it to have it do all types of things. Um, and, and we demo, like I said, um, 10 to 15 things and simulate several more. So the first thing it says to do here, uh, we're gonna change the password for the admin account and then we're gonna create a second admin user and then we're gonna set the session timeout to 15 minutes and we're also gonna configure this anti-lockout rule. So in order to get to um, our device, we need to um, put the IP address in. And if you highlight things in the description here, it will actually copy to the clipboard and it keeps me from having to type. So the default username is admin and the default password I can't type and think at the same time. So the default um, 
uh, passwords PFSense for a brand new install of PFSense. And just like the, the real PFSense, when you, if you don't have the um, uh, default change, you'll get this notice all the time. So one of the first things it wants you to do is go ahead and copy this password or change the password to this password. To do that, um, we go under system and we'll come down to user manager and we have only one account so far and we'll go ahead and click this edit button and we will just paste in the new password because I copied that and that is the only thing that we need to change on this page. We're just changing the password. We'll click save. All right, the second set of steps here is to actually create another user account. So we'll come down here and click on add. And the username is Z Olson. And the password is uh, basically um, it says stay out. But of course, some things are swapped. So once again, I'll just paste that in to save time. Uh, full name is Zoe Olson. And it says group membership admins. So this is um, uh, when you have these two different um, boxes here. And it says not a member of admins. And over here it says member of, and this is blank. So if I highlight this and go ahead and move it over, I just moved that group membership into admin. So Zoe will be a group of the admin uh, users. We only have one user group so far. And we'll go ahead and click on save. And we have that account created. Uh, the next step is to set the session timeout to 15 minutes. So in real life, you don't want somebody coming up and um, jumping on your appliance if you walk away to go to lunch or something. So we'll click on settings and session timeout. Uh, some appliances, you can do this per user. Uh, PFSense, you can only do it for everybody. And if you wanted to, you could um, click on that arrow and move it up and down that way. I'll click on save. And I believe it just saved. Now this last one says disable the web configurator anti-lockout rule for HTTP. Um, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't have any idea what this is. Um, so what, it, what that is, if I look under rules real quick and go to LAN, I only have one rule, but when you saw PFSense, you have really not much for any rules at all that allows anything. But this rule here, what it does, it says anti-lockout. So what it does, it keeps you from accidentally creating a rule that would block you from getting access to your own device. So that would be a bad thing. So what we're doing, which is something I don't usually uh, recommend, is to disable that because I feel the safety blanket is important. So to change that, so you can delete that rule. And before you delete that rule, you definitely would want to create another rule that says allow me from my IP address to PFSense. So um, I went to system and click on advanced. And then it says for HTTP, so I'll click on HTTP. And then it says disable the web configurator anti-lockout rule. And if I come down here and look, it's probably right here in front of me somewhere. Um, okay, it's right here. So by default, it's not checked, which is um, the good thing. I, I just checked it and I'm disabling um, the ability for me to, del to delete this rule. And you can read more about it right here. And like I said, typically in real life, I don't do this, but um, if you really want to lock down your security appliance, you would um, disable that, put in one single rule that allows only me from my IP address, um, maybe certain certain times of the day, I don't know. Uh, we'll click on save. You always get this green um, dialog that pops up to confirm. We'll click on score lab and I got this all done correctly. If you obviously, if you're familiar with test if you do something wrong, you can look and it tells you step by step how to do things. So I think that wraps up my part. Um, if there's questions about this, you can actually contact us um, in the question. Uh, you can email me. Um, 
Um, with that, I guess I'll throw it back to Adam. Thanks, Dana. So again, these are just two of the examples of, of many of the changes that we have implemented in the new course. Um, one of the focuses that I really like is just that focus on giving students hands-on training with industry tools, with the technologies that they're gonna see when they get out into the workforce. And again, if you're familiar with Test Out, we do have a skills guarantee on this course that if we say that a student has passed our certification and they have learned these skills that we teach throughout the course, if they go out and get a job and the employer finds they don't actually have the skills they certified in, we offer $1,000 to that employer to cover expenses related to to more or less a mistake. And uh, so far, nobody's ever claimed that. So we really feel confident in our ability to give students hands-on training to help them understand the concepts of cybersecurity and, and the topics covered in Security Pro version seven. On my screen, you're gonna see it is cybersecurity month and we've been doing a lot with cybersecurity awareness. And uh, for those of you who want a chance to win, this is for instructors, for IT educators, we're giving away $8,000 in grants and prizes, different Raspberry Pis and toolkits and, and grants for your program to, to help expand technology and, and what you do in the classroom. So for a chance to win, I have a question that, that'll be on that page that you can answer. And it is the new Security Pro version seven course has expanded by what percent? And if you were looking earlier, I'll just give you the answer since you've made it this far, and it is 15%. And then for those of you who have joined today, we're gonna select, I was going to say, uh, post something in the questions tab to know that you're listening, but if everybody did that, I would lose all of the questions that have been asked. So um, as a thank you, we're gonna randomly select three attendees. Don't post a comment in the questions for your chance to win. If you're here, we will randomly select three to win a Raspberry Pi, a test out toolkit and test out socks for cybersecurity month. And we'll reach out to you. We'll send you an email that says, hey, you've been selected as a winner and uh, we'll ship you out a prize. And so with that, um, thanks everybody for coming. And we're gonna move on to questions. We've got Dane on the line to answer the technical questions and the course questions that I won't know. But if you have a question, we'll give you a couple seconds to, to go into that questions questions panel and submit the question. And uh, I've got a couple that have come through already that I'll address while you're while you're typing any other questions in. Um, one of them I noticed, um, well, I didn't notice when I put this in, but uh, Bill noticed for me that he saw that the outline that we had, it said there were 14 hours of video content in version six and three hours in version seven. That's because of the draft nature of the course. We get that final count at the end, but there will be an expansion of video content it's not gonna shrink drastically or, or change. Um, is it possible to get a list of all equipment models and, and simulated lab sim, let's see, let me read that correctly. To get a list of all equipment models simulated in lab sim for Security Pro version seven. So that's probably looking at um, what equipment's being used, if I'm reading this right, what technology we do have a list of the technologies, but we'll have to work on, on getting specific switches and appliances, the, the hardware aspect of what's being used. Um, in this course, it's not like our PC Pro course. We don't have those physical hardware labs where you're configuring actual devices. And so it's a lot more on the, the software side than it is on a specific hardware. But I'll look into that for you, Anthony. I, I can expand on that so you can buy a pf sense appliance that is like a rack mount or device they're not very big it comes pre-installed with pf sense um or you could download the iso image it's a linux distribution and then install it on um uh really something with like two to four gigs of ram and then uh any older machine you got laying around put two network cards in or three network cards um if you want a dmz um, for me, what I do is do it all in a virtualized environment. So I, I download it and I have a virtual network with servers and Windows 10 and Windows 7 and the PFSense and everything functions as, as its own little network. So, um, but yeah, you can buy a, a PFSense appliance that's already pre-configured. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, one of the questions is, how do you switch students from uh, version six to version seven? That has to do with configuration with your campus admin, with the class that you have set up and uh, and shifting students. Typically, um, from my understanding, I'm not necessarily the lab sim expert, um, so I might have to get a, a correction on this, but when you set up a class with a specific product, you can associate different products with it. And so when you're setting them up, if it has version six, that's what the students are by default going to see. And so you would have to have a class configured with version seven to allow them to see that. Um, so it, it has to do with your class creation and class management. And we've got, we've got an implementation team that can help with any migrations or shifting. And we've got, they've got a very good knowledge base that has a bunch of tutorials and videos that can show you how to configure and set up your classes for specific product versions. As, um, as a one teacher, of the questions, oh. will, will you need, oh, what was that? Oh, I was gonna say, as a teacher, I uh, never switched uh, in, in the middle of a semester. Whenever I created a new course for the new semester or a new term, I would then make the switch over um, to the newer version. And since this is being released, middle late November um, I'm assuming a lot of schools will be starting right after Christmas break or winter break and then um, I'd start fresh that's as a teacher that's what I would do yeah there's enough shifting in the course that it would be a little confusing to shift mid-semester um, with those with purchasing concerns with version 6 to version 7 it is the same ISBN number for bookstores and for your school. So the purchasing doesn't need to change in any way. It just has to do with the configuration when you're setting up a class, whether it's version six or version seven. So nothing to worry about on, on purchase concerns. Um, question about cloud security. Uh, this one would be for you, Dana, if you want to chime in. How are we addressing the cloud security section and do we have labs that address the cloud? Uh, we have some demos um, for cloud security. We don't have any simulations at this point. We haven't simulated um, Azure or AWS at this point. So we do have some demos on securing um, things in Azure. I'm trying to think exactly which ones. We're also working on the Cyber Defense Pro. So I've been working on that lately. So I, I get confused about which is in which course at this point. So we do have uh, demos, but no sims for cloud security at this point. Thanks, Dana. Um, one of the questions was alignment towards certifications. Um, with Security Pro, it aligns to the CompTIA Security Plus certifications. We have an Ethical Hacker Pro that aligns to EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker. And then Dana just mentioned that we have a new course we are working on. We don't have a, a release date for that at this time because it's in the early stages, but it's called Cyber Defense Pro, and it will align to the CYSA Plus or the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus course from CompTIA. I'm just going through a few more. How soon will this course be available? You do have pre release access now, and the launch date for this course, the official launch where you could create classes for students, is November 17th. So if you're looking at a winter start, it will be ready before then so you can get it everything configured. And then this course will come with the typical PowerPoints, the lesson plans, all of the instructor resources that you're used to. And I'm gonna give one more second. Um, so with that, I didn't want to take too much time out of your day today. Um, my specific email, if you have any additional questions or if you've put a question that I haven't hit, I'm going to I'm going to go into that and I'll, we'll send you a response to any questions you've had. had. But uh, if you have any needs outside once we close the webinar, my direct email is a k e y s a keys at testout.com. So I would be happy to take any questions, any feedback. If you get into the pre-release and you see something that you have a question about or you would like to, to give feedback on, please send it to me. I'd, have, I'd, I'd love to see that. Um, again, we're going we're gonna to pick three random of you that attended for, for some prizes. Um, if I saw some questions about the cybersecurity site, uh, whether the link was working. So 
we'll have that link sent out in this email and I'll double check to make sure, every, sure everything's working on the Cybersecurity Awareness Month website to make sure there's a spot for you to put the 15% the answer. And this recording will be available as well as the resources, the change document and the PowerPoint slides. Those will all be sent out to you in an email in the next couple of days. We'll also publish the video of this recording on our YouTube account as well. Um, again, thank you all for joining. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I know that change document will probably be a little bit more helpful when it comes to looking at how the content is shifting and changing. And uh, thank you all for joining us and look forward to speaking with you again.